everyone. Thank you for being here today. We're going to do a 60 minute basics and beyond practice. But um, as always, anytime you want to modify or add something on, that's great. This is your time and I'm sure you're all seasoned yogi. So uh, feel free to add on or, or delete something that doesn't feel good in your body. If you're at home, which I'm assuming most of you, most of you are, Grab a blanket or a pillow. We're gonna start seated, so you wanna have your hips higher than your knees. And if you have yoga blocks, great. If not, just grab a couple books. And if you know you'd like to use a strap, although we won't be specifically using it, just grab a belt or a bathrobe tie. So we're gonna start seated. If for some reason sitting is not feeling good today, begin on your back, come into Shavasana, and focus on your breathing. But for now, please come to a comfortable cross-legged seat and place your hands on your hips. Right? And sitting up tall, close your eyes and imagine there is a wall behind you. So you want to Gently move your shoulders back in space without touching that wall. And begin to bring a little bit of focus to that space between your navel and your pubic bone. So just beginning to move your navel toward your spine. And with your eyes closed, Feel the sit bones become a bit more grounded into your space. The crown of your head is reaching toward the ceiling. And in our practice, we begin to turn our attention and our focus inward. So please take a moment to scan the body. It's beginning to become aware of how you're feeling today. Think about relaxing the space in your jaw. Relax your shoulders away from your ears. And begin to connect with your breath. So we don't need to change anything or force anything. Simply begin to lengthen out the inhalation of the breath and match that inhalation with the exhalation. creating the sense of evenness with the breath. As you breathe in, you should begin to feel some expansion in the belly, in the rib cage, in the chest. And as you exhale, a sense of grounding and a sense of relaxation. beginning to cultivate your ujjayi pranayama. A deep inhale through the nose, exhale through the nose, and feeling that slight constriction at the back of the throat. For these next few rounds, pausing at the end of your exhalation before you inhale, just letting the breath lengthen and soften the body.
After your next complete exhalation, please bring your palms to your heart center. If you practice with an intention, set an intention for your practice today, or perhaps dedicate your practice to somebody who needs your strength and your energy. Bow your head to seal your intention. And lift your gaze. Relax your hands down by your side. We'll switch the cross of your ankles now. And again, sitting up tall, bringing that attention to your low belly. Bring your arms out to the side. And on an inhale, sweep the arms up. And on an exhale, lower down. Inhale, lengthens the side body. And exhale, come down. Just continue moving with your breath, imagining that there's this thick air in your room and you're working to lift it up and then gently lower down. One more time on your inhalation and then exhale lower. Keep your right arm down on the mat. Inhale, sweep your left arm up. Take a gentle side stretch, grounding through your left hip, pressing your right palm into the earth. One more breath here. Inhale, sweep both arms up. Maybe take your gaze up. Left hand comes down. Inhale, lengthen on that right side and then take a side stretch. You can always bend the left elbow. Your gaze can be down at your mat or up toward the ceiling. Let's begin to notice the sensations in the body. And stay with that strong breath. Inhale, sweep both arms up. As you exhale, right hand comes down behind the right hip, left palm on your right thigh. Take an inhale to sit up tall and take a side stretch. And so early in our practice, not forcing anything, just letting the breath lead the movement, maybe beginning to take your gaze over your right shoulder. your next exhalation. Sweep the arms back up and exhale over towards your left. Use the arm behind your back to straighten the spine as you move your right rib cage toward the left. Just letting that inhale lengthen the crown of the head toward the ceiling. The exhale now bringing the right rib cage toward the left. One more round of breath. Beautiful. Inhale, sweep both arms up and exhale, lower your hands down to your thighs. Take two breaths here. Soften the shoulders. As you inhale, please take your arms out to a T. We're going to cross the right elbow over the left, coming into this eagle shape. So this could be your eagle arms today, maybe bringing the back of the palms together, maybe bringing the palms to meet. So we're opening up through the upper back, taking the fingers toward the ceiling and elbows away from your shin. Inhale, lifts the fingers up. Stay with two more rounds of breath. And again, not forcing anything. You can always modify the pose, release whatever you have with the fingers. Nice, exhale, release, take the arms out to the side, and then we switch sides. All right, and so maybe this side is a different you can always experiment, come into this V shape. See if you can set.
extend the breath to that space between the shoulders. Still maintaining that core engagement. Beautiful exhale, release the arms down by the side. Inhale, sweep the arms up, interlace your fingers above your head, press the palms toward the ceiling, release your shoulders. As you exhale, take your arms down in front of your chest, press the palms away, take your gaze towards your navel. Inhale, come back, maybe bringing your gaze up. Exhale, round. So moving in the seated cat cow pose. Inhale, the breath takes you up one more time. Exhale, press the palms away from the chin. Beautiful. Inhale, come up, release the hands down toward your thighs. Take a few breaths here. Nice. And then we're going to come on to our hands and knees. For our friends that might have been in Shavasana, please meet us on our hands and knees and we'll come into child's pose. So take your knees wide, your big toes to touch. Press your hips back and begin to extend your arms forward. Maybe the crown of the head is reaching toward the front of your mat, the forehead may be on the mat. And slowly begin to walk your hands over toward the right side of your mat. Using your right hand for stability, reach through the left fingers. But all the while grounding down through your left hip. Nice. Gently come back through center and over toward the left. Reach and extend. So there's an action of right, reaching with the fingers as you press back with your right hip. Breathe into the right rib cage. Nice. Come back through center and know that you can always add child's pose to our sequence. After your next complete exhalation, please come up to your hands and knees. So feel free, you can always use your blanket to place under your knees in this tabletop, wrists below shoulders, right? Knees are about hip distance apart. So look through that little gateway of your thighs. You shouldn't see your toes. And then as you press into the mat, lift your knees off of the ground. So you're hovering here, engaging through the core, and then exhale, lower down. Press back into a narrow knee child's pose for three breaths. Lengthen through the palms, through the upper back, through the arms. And then come back to your tabletop pose. We'll move through your cat cow. So as you inhale, lift your tailbone, drop the belly, take your gaze forward. As you exhale, drop the tailbone, round the spine, tuck the chin, and then inhale, come back through that cow pose. So moving in and out of these two shapes, beginning to mobilize the spine. Right? And feel free at any time to pause for an extra breath. If it feels good in your scared cat pose or in that cow pose, move through about two to three on your own, closing your eyes perhaps. Coming back to that Ujjayi breath. One more round and we'll meet in tabletop pose. So take your gaze slightly ahead of your fingers. As you inhale, lift your right knee and straighten your right leg. So 
Look under your chest. You should see those right toes. Stay here or extend your left arm long. So we're here in the spinal balance, reaching with the left fingers, pressing back with the heel. Lift the navel toward the spine. If this is too much, always feel free to bring that left palm down. One more breath. Nice. Lower that right knee, lower the left palm if it's not already down. Take an inhale, exhale here, and then inhale, extend the left leg. Square off the hips. It doesn't have to be any higher, right, than hip level and then start to reach through those right fingers. So there's this sort of oppositional energy. You're reaching forward and pressing back, keeping the belly engaged. Always feel free to bring that right palm down. Keep the breath steady. Shaking is always acceptable, right? You're working hard. Exhale, lower back down. Take your knees wide and let's come into child's pose for three breaths. Perhaps now taking your arms down by your side. Using that smooth and steady ujjayi pranayama. That deep ocean breath. Slowly start to walk your hands up. We'll bring the knees closer together, right? And then knees stay below hips. We're going to move into puppy pose. So you're going to begin to walk your hands out as far as they can go and begin to lower the chest toward the ground. So your knees and hips are in line. Your ears are being framed by your triceps. Begin to cultivate that feeling of pressing the mat away from you. Nice and long extension through the spine. One more breath here. Nice. We'll start to walk the hands back to the tabletop. And we're going to come into our um, shoulder opener. So you can always use a blanket here. Right, take your left palm directly underneath your gaze. We're going to lift the right arm up, so creating space across the chest. And as you exhale, threading that right arm underneath the left, maybe using your blanket underneath your right ear. So options here, you can use the left palm to create some stability. Some of us will want to open up the chest a little bit more, take the left palm into the air, maybe wrap it around the low back. And just noticing in your practice what works for you today. Soften through the left, excuse me, through the right shoulder, soften through the right side of your jaw. Two more breaths here. Just gently begin to press back up using the strength in your left palm, and then we'll switch sides. So now right palm comes underneath your gaze, left arm goes up, follow that left thumb, and then on the exhale, reach as far as you can to soften the left shoulder down. And with each exhale, just noticing the sensation on the left side of the body. Letting everything on your left side of the face, the temple, the ear, just let it be settling into the earth. Feeling supported. Take two more breaths here. To your next exhalation, press back up into your tabletop. And then here we'll take our hands, just about two handprints forward. Right, we're going to tuck our toes and we're going to come into this bear pose first before we move into downward facing dog. 
So bend your knees a lot. Press the mat away from you. And keep your gaze perhaps at your big toes. Lengthen through the spine. And then begin to straighten your right leg. Keeping the left knee bent. And begin to walk that out. Easing into the shape, letting the back of the legs open up. Spreading your fingers wide. And then perhaps finding a moment of stillness here. Two breaths in your down dog. We'll come back here several times so it doesn't have to be the deepest down dog. And after your next exhalation, bend your knees a lot and take as many steps as you need to walk to the top of the mat. As you inhale, lengthen your spine and exhale, forward fold. Bend your knees a lot and then stay here in forward fold, clasping opposite elbows. Just let the crown of the head reach down. Keep your weight equally balanced in your heels and your big toe ball mount. One more breath. Release the hands. Inhale. Lift the heart to lengthen your monkey pose. Exhale, fold in two. And then grounding down. Inhale, come all the way back up to standing. Take your hands down through your heart center and just pause here with your palms at your heart, strong grounding through your heels. One more inhale and exhale, really nice. Relax your hands down by your side. Take your feet about hip distance apart, hands are down. Begin to feel a bit more grounding through your feet. As we inhale, sweep the arms up. Interlace your right fingers around your left wrist. Lengthen the left side and take a nice side stretch here. Right, maybe using that little clasp on your left wrist to feel a bit more opening through the left side. Rooting down through your left outer edge of the foot. Inhale back to center and second side. Again, your gaze can be down at the ground or maybe up toward the crease of that right elbow, the inner crease. Nice. Inhale, come all the way up. Relax your hands. As we inhale, sweep the arms up. We're going to twist open to the right, taking the right hand back, left arm forward. Inhale back through center, over to the opposite side. Maybe the gaze goes towards your left finger. Just go through toward the right. Thinking about the extension across the chest. One more breath here. Inhale, come all the way up and arms come down. Finding our strong mountain pose. So our shoulders are stacked at top of our hips, hips on top of the ankles, tailbone lengthening. As you inhale, sweep the arms up and we'll forward fold. So feel free to bend your knees. Inhale, lift and lengthen. Exhale, please plant your hands. We're gonna step back to the top of a push-up. So take your time with the extension of the legs. Lower your knees to the ground, and then slow and with control, bend the elbows and lower the chest all the way to the mat. Nice. Once you're there, lift the right leg, extend and lengthen. Lift the left leg, extend and lengthen. And take your forearms coming into this Sphinx pose. So the palms are rooting down, the forearms are rooting down. Right, start to press into the tops of the feet as you guide your sticky mat toward you. Take a few breaths here, breathing into the low back, so strengthening the muscles along the spine. One more breath here. 
exhale, lower down. Take your palms where your elbows were. We'll do three dynamic low cobras. So as you inhale, hug the elbows in, lift the chest. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, lifting, peeling up from the navel. I just like that cobra coming out of the basket. One more time, inhale, lift, just hold for two breaths. Really smooth and steady. Exhale, lower down. We'll press up into our table pose and back into child's pose for five breaths. In this child's pose, work to send the breath all the way down to the lower part of the belly, inflating the back. Two more deep and deliberate breaths. As you're ready, press back up to tabletop. And let's come into downward facing dog. So tuck your toes, lift the hips, press back. So feel the lift in the belly. Heels are getting heavy. Two more breaths here. As you're ready, we're going to just come back to our table pose. Have your block somewhere close by to the front of the mat. Right, and from here, let's take the right foot forward. We're going to meet in a low lunge. So you can re scoot the left knee back. Right, relax your shoulders. Press into the top of your back foot. And then when you're ready, start to walk your hands onto that right thigh. Noticing what's happening in that left hip flexor. Bring your left arm forward to guide that left hip forward. Right hand to meet it. Inhale, sweep your arms up. Take a full inhale here and then interlace your right fingers around that left wrist. Let's take a side stretch. And so lengthening, just notice that right knee might want to and jet out to the right side of your mat. Try to guide it back to the center. One more breath here. Inhale, come back up. Lower your hands. We're going to take the right hand on the inner, left hand on the inner side of that right foot and start to twist toward the right. So keep the right knee in line with the right big toe, left rib cage toward the ceiling. Maybe that right arm comes up. Right? And just be careful not to drop all of your weight into the left wrist. One more round of breath here. Nice. Exhale, lower down. Take your right knee back to meet the left. And then switch sides. Left foot comes forward. Ground down through the top of the right leg and then start to walk your arms up onto the left thigh. Right arm comes forward as that right rib cage comes forward. Left arm comes to meet it. Inhale all the way up. Take a breath here. Lengthen your tailbone toward the earth. Left fingers around the right wrist and then we side stretch. So we use the stability through the top of the right foot. Right? Everything that's below the waist is strong and stable. Inhale all the way back up. Exhale, lower down. So now the right hand is on the inner edge of that left foot. Right? You can rotate again, coming into this easy twist and then take the left arm up. So stacking the shoulders, keeping the breath steady. Your gaze can be up at your left fingers or down toward the earth. Exhale, lower 
back down. Take the left knee to meet the right. Come into downward facing dog for five breaths or meet in child's pose, your choice. If you're in child's pose, let the breath, let gravity take control as the sit bones meet the heels. If you're in downward facing dog, think about letting the heels get a little bit heavier, right? And then bring some attention to that space between your thumb and index finger. Pressing down, one more breath here. As you exhale, we're gonna walk to the top of the mat. If you're in child's pose, just meet us at the top of the mat. As we inhale here into our monkey pose, exhale, fold in two, and then grounding down, inhale, come all the way up to standing. Hands through your heart center. Take three rounds of breath here. Just noticing the sensations in the body and coming back to that steady breath. So now we're going to move into tree pose, Vrikshasana. Take your feet about hip distance apart. You can always come to a wall um, if you want a little bit more stability. So we're gonna start grounding through our right foot. Hands are at the hips. Take the left knee into the air. So your choice, right? You can keep the big toe on the ground. You can bring it into the inner calf or perhaps the inner thigh. When you're ready, bring your hands to heart center. Keeping the breath steady. Right. And then lifting out of that right knee to keep the right leg strong. And maybe starting to extend the arms up toward the sky. So in balance, our core is really important. So just imagine you're kind of wearing a big cummerbund and we're just tightening it a little bit. If your arms are up in the air, perhaps play with your gaze, start to move your gaze to that place where the ceiling meets the wall. Hands come down to the hips. Bring that right knee into the air for four, three, two, and one. Lower the left foot. Second side, so right knee comes up. And this side might be different. Maybe you can come to a different spot on the left leg. Right? Just don't, don't worry so much about where you're at with that foot. Just find the stability and then start to build the pose. Using the wall is always a good idea. Right? We all need a little support sometimes. And then you decide when you're ready, if you want, to bring the arms into this equation. that dristy or your gaze steady. And then maybe start to play with the gaze, right? Maybe you fall out of the pose, that's okay too. Just come back, come back to your breath. Hands come down to your hips. Please take your right knee into crane pose for four, three, two, and one. Just let that go. Come back to your mat. Come bring both feet back to your mat. So we're gonna come into Malasana. So bring your uh, feet about as wide as your sticky mat, toes out, heels in. So in this prayer squat, right, so the prayer squat, you're going to bring the knees over the toes. For some of us today, this might be our prayer squat. We just want to think about not collapsing into this pose. So think more cobra in the upper body, right? Some of us might come down to a block, or you might come into this malasana with your 
<clears throat> excuse me, your elbows, pressing your knees apart, right? You can sit on a block wherever you are. Think about lifting the chest. So we want to keep open through the top of the body. Breathing, maybe letting the elbows work to open up the space and the hip flexors a little bit. If you're not using the block, be careful of dropping all of your weight into this pose. So you don't want to overwork the hips. Think about lifting a bit out of the pelvis. Two more breaths here. And then slowly let's lower onto the ground. Please bring your feet out in front of you. So one of the things of having a home practice is you get to, the benefits are you get to do your favorite poses again and again. The other thing we all need to remember, and I always need to remind myself, is you have to do maybe the poses that you avoid. So for me, it's core. So we're gonna do a little bit of core work, a little bit of our um, Navasana or boat pose. So a lot of ways to do this, you can take your hands behind you for support, you can bring your hands to the behind your thighs for support, right? So we want to just shift the weight back. You can kind of feel that shifting back onto your tailbone, right? That little triangle between the, um, the, the pubic bone and the tailbone. And then you want to lift the legs up into the air, right? So you can stay here with a little support. With the hands, you can take the arms behind you or begin to extend the arms out. So just stay where you are, right? Keep the heart lifted, inner thighs are coming together. Breathe here, right? So there is often that tendency to hold our breath in these more challenging poses. Nice, exhale, lower down. Cross your ankles, lift the heart. Exhale, release and come back. So we're gonna lift the legs. Right, lift the heart, maybe start to extend the arms. You can always lift your gaze, right? Shaking is a good sign, right? We're working hard. One more breath here. Exhale, lower down. Just sit up tall. Right? Take the feet back in front of you. Lean back and then we'll come into the third Navasana. Reaching, building some heat, right, which is always a good sign. Hugging the inner thighs together. Beautiful. Exhale, release. Come back into your tabletop pose and then your choice, meet in child's pose or come into downward facing dog. Maybe taking a shorter down dog stance to really get into the hamstrings and the back of the calves. Breathe deep here for three to five more rounds of breath. Nice, let's bend the knees a lot. Look toward the top of the mat and we'll meet in a standing forward fold. Bending the knees as much as possible, still clasping opposite elbows. Hollowing out the belly so the chest and thighs meet. One more breath here. Exhale, release the hands and then as you inhale, coming all hands through heart center for three breaths. And just coming back to your smooth and steady breath. Feeling the heat in the body, the space you're creating. Nice, relax your hands. So keep a block at the top of your mat. And we're going to take a nice wide step with the right, excuse me, with the left leg to the back of the mat. 
So lifting the left leg, we're going to find our warrior two stance. Right toes are forward, the right ankle is in line with the left arch. Bend into the right knee, right? So you should be able to see that second and third toe. And then coming into warrior two, taking your palms together at your heart center. And then extending the arms, take the gaze over the right fingers, keeping that bend in the right knee, but bring equal attention to the left wrist. So there's this sense of reaching forward to the top of your mat and then reaching back. So an equal amount of energy in both directions. Tuck that right hip under gently. As you inhale, we're going to lift the arms up, straighten the front leg. Exhale, lower. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, bend. Inhale, straighten. Let the arms meet overhead. One more time, bend into your warrior two. And then straighten the legs. We're going to come into triangle pose. Uttita Trikonasana. So your front leg is straight. Take a nice deep inhale and start to reach forward to the top of your mat. And when you can't reach any further, let that right palm fall where it wants to. Extend the left arm up. Maybe your gaze is down at the right big toe. Maybe it's straight ahead. Maybe it's up the left thumb. Don't worry about your gaze. Think more about that beautiful extension right through the top of the body. Again, tucking that right hip bone under slightly, extending the crown of the head, and energetically pressing into that outer edge of that left foot. Beautiful. One more breath here. Inhale, come back up to center, and find your warrior two for a breath. Exhale, release. Just bump your left foot up to meet the right. Wobbly here. And then second side. So we'll step the right foot all the way back. Just take your time. Right? Don't worry about um, the perfect alignment at first. Just, you know, if you need to make an adjustment, then make the adjustment. Bend into the left knee. Right, so for me, this is a little bit too long, so I'm going to shorten the stance. Right, see your second and third toe. And then we're going to square off the hips. So take your palms to your heart center, facing the right side of your mat. Extend the arms. And then take your gaze over the left middle finger. Right, at the same time, I can feel, right, for me, this is my weaker hip, so I can feel that left knee kind of gliding toward the right side of the mat. I have to kind of move it back to the middle. All right, lots of extension, lifting through the inner seam of that right leg. One more breath here. As you inhale, sweep your arms up, straighten that front knee. Exhale, extend. Inhale, straighten. Exhale, extend. Lots of length here. Inhale, palms meet. Exhale, find your warrior two. And then one more time. As we inhale, keep that front leg straightened. Extend the arms, and then we'll come into triangle pose. So both hips are moving toward the back of your mat. Left palm comes down, right arm comes up. So breathing here, think about that left sitting bone moving in line with that left heel, opening the right hip away from the left side of the body. Lots of extension, beautiful stretch for the psoas muscle. One more breath here. Nice. Inhale, come all the way up. And then find your warrior two just for a breath. Nice. Release your hands. Take the toes to face the right side of the mat. Maybe have your blocks nearby. 
Right, so we're coming into this wide-legged forward fold. Heels out, toes in. So your choice, you can keep your hands at your hips, maybe. It's going to feel good for some of us to interlace the fingers behind the back. All right, full inhale, reaching the heart open, and then exhale, folding forward. So if your hands are interlaced, you're going to let that little basket of your hands come over your head, or you might have your hands on the ground. Let the weight come a little bit forward into the big toe ball mount, hollow out the belly, and let the crown of the head get heavy. Right, you can make sure that your inner leg line is engaged by imagining that you're trying to scrunch your sticking that up, so pulling it together might feel a bit more engagement there. And then inhale, come into this wide-legged monkey pose. And we're going to twist. You can use your blocks here. Take your left palm to the block underneath your gaze, right hand to right hip. And as you inhale, start to rotate the chest toward the back of your space, maybe taking the right arm up. We want to focus on long spine, long and smooth back of the neck, crown of the head, moving away from your tailbone. One more breath here. Exhale, lower down, right palm on the block, and then switching sides. So you're taking the right rib cage toward the left, and the left arm can come up, don't worry about it. You can always stay on the hip. And again, try not to kind of press so much weight into the wrist that's on the ground. One more breath here. Nice exhale, lower down. Remove the blocks. And then we're just going to take this wide-legged stance with downward dog arms. Pressing the chest toward the ground and really rooting down through the fingers. One more round of breath here. Right, slowly walk your hands back to the mat. Inhale, we lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold just for a breath. Bring your hands to your hips and come up. We'll heel toe the feet together and come down to a seat. So keep your bottom sort of in the middle of the mat. Take your feet out to that same stance where we were coming into Navasana. So we're going to bring our arms out in front of us, these robot arms, and just lower down onto the mat with control, using those, in, those abdominal muscles where you can feel really strong there and there's that point where you want to roll all the way back just take a breath and resist and then when you're ready come all the way down onto your back right and then <clears throat> just bring your knees into your chest and make some circles with your low back right going clockwise and counterclockwise and then as you're ready, bring your feet to the ground, right about hip distance apart. Extend your fingers so your fingers should touch the back of your heels. So as we do these supported bridge poses, always an option to bring the block and bring that under your back. Right? We want to open up the whole front side of the body when we're doing these poses. So you can stay here with the block or you can take one of your blocks, place it between your inner thighs, right? bend your elbows, take the palms to meet, to kind of uh, face one another, and then as you inhale, pressing really strongly into your feet, start to lift your hips up toward the ceiling. Right? So the knees are moving away from the chest, the chest is moving toward, right, towards your forehead, Using that block to keep the integrity right, of this pose, using the adductor muscles. 
breathing into the whole front side of the body. And then as you're ready, lower all the way down. If you have a block under your sacrum, stay there. Just focus on that three-part breath so you're really lifting through the low belly, the mid chest, and then the upper chest. So here we're going to come into our second back bend. I've taken the block out of my thighs, but I'm going to kind of just have that muscle memory, right? Have that same engagement. And some of us might want to lower the palms and start to interlace the fingers underneath the low back. Breathing here, pressing firmly into all four corners of both feet. One more breath, and then exhale, lower all the way down. The back bends are really energizing, so we're going to come into one more, your choice. Firmly pressing into the feet. Right, maybe interlacing the fingers underneath the low back, tucking those shoulder blades underneath, and then lifting up through the hips and pelvis. So much strength and pressing into the feet, almost like you could just stand up here. Right? So much strength and grounding there. One more breath. Exhale, lower all the way down. And then coming into our happy baby pose. So bringing the knees as wide as the sticky mat, soles the feet toward the ceiling, and then either clasping behind the thighs at the ankles or the outer edges of the heels. Pressing your knees toward the outer edges of your rib cage, soles the feet toward the sky. And notice if you're holding any tension right in your shoulders, in your jaw, in the muscles of your face. Relaxing there. For some of us, it feels good to rock from side to side. Sending the breath to the hips. And then as you're ready, come back to center. And so let's release the soles of the feet to the ground. And then we're going to cross that right ankle over the left thigh. So moving into this number four shape. So for some of us, this is going to be enough. Flexing that right foot. Getting into the hip flexors. Maybe you can think about lifting the sole of the foot off of the ground, interlacing the fingers, right? keeping both legs active. And then maybe using the right elbow to gently guide that right knee away from the chest. Right? So moving with this sense of effort, but also ease. So Trying to avoid muscling our way into these shapes and poses. You can also experiment with shifting your weight over into that left side of the body. You might feel a bit more opening and sensation on the outer edge of the right hip. Deep inhales and slow exhales. Come back to center, release the thigh and lower the foot. And we'll switch sides. You might need to shift your hips over to the right. Second side, left ankle across the right thigh. So see, maybe this is enough for you right now. Maybe beginning to lift the foot off of the ground. And you can play around with that extended Leg, maybe straightening the knee, right, bending it. It's kind of using your home practice to do a little bit more of exploration. Shifting the weight onto the right hip, right, feeling that opening on the left side of the body. 
Breathing here, smooth and steady. Beautiful. Come back to center. Release the right leg. Uncross the ankle. And then just being mindful of your props, we're going to take the feet as wide as the sticky mat. Take our arms out to a T. Full inhale here, and then as you exhale, drop the knees to the right. Maybe cross the right ankle on top of that left thigh and take your gaze to the opposite palm. So your knees are to the right, so we're going to look to the left. And with each exhale, maybe letting the knees fall to the ground. Shoulders are both on the mat. This is such a nice way to send some energy, send the blood to all the organs. I feel that opening through the hips. After your next exhalation, release that ankle, come back to center. Deep inhale here and exhale over to the left. Crossing the ankle only if that's available and feels right safe and kind of a smart thing for you to do today. And then take your gaze towards your right thumb. Most important, using the breath as that tool to enhance the pose and to send the signals to our nervous system to relax. Stimulating the parasympathetic nerves and letting the body settle into the shape. Two more rounds of breath here. Slowly release the left ankle. Bring both soles of the feet together. Bring your arms down by your side. We're gonna take the knees into the chest. Wrap your hands around your shins. Energize the whole body. Maybe taking chin to your chest. Nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, release the legs. Extend your arms by your side and preparing for our final pose of Shavasana. So letting your heels feel heavy, the feet splaying open. Closing your eyes, maybe using a towel to cover your eyes from the light. Making sure that the spine is feeling right. I just needed to shift my hips a little to the left, right? So the sit bones, the sacrum are feeling centered on the ground. Let your body be, be completely supported by the earth. Bones becoming heavy, the muscles relaxing. And allow your breath to be completely effortless.
begin to invite some small movement back into the body. Bending and straightening your fingers, rotating your wrists, rotating your ankles. And bring your inner legs to be your inner leg line together. Extend your arms up over your head, feeling this full body stretch. And then gently bring your knees into your chest. And make your way on the right to the right side of the body. Extend your right arm long. And bring your knees a little closer to your chest. And staying here in this fetal position for a few breaths. Letting your practice settle into the body. And then using the strength of your arms, press up. Come back to a seated position, crossing your ankles. Bringing your hands to your heart center, sitting up tall and strong. Taking a moment to recall the intention for your practice today. And in this gesture, in this gesture, in this mudra of gratitude, we thank all of the teachers that have brought this practice to us today. The divine light in me honors and recognizes the divine light in you. Namaste. Thank you so much, yogis, for joining us today.